iOS 14.3 is here. I'm going to show you a better way to brush your teeth and take notes at the same time. And I'm going to show you how I am saving all my links and documents. It's time for iOS Today. iOS Today comes to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees LastPass can ensure they are by making access and authentication seamless. Whether employees are working in the office or remotely, visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This episode of iOS Today is brought to you by LastPass. Don't wait until the end of the year to get strong security. Start solidifying your cybersecurity strategy with the award-winning LastPass today. Go to lastpass.com slash twit to find out how they can help you. Micah like Sargent. Well, hello there, Leo Laporte. <laughs> iOS Today is on the air, the show where we cover the iPhone, the mm -hmm. iPad, the Apple Watch, and you can't see it, but we've got it. The Well, I could show you, actually. It's beautiful. The Apple TV, where it's snowing right oh, now. Oh, let it snow, let it snow. Is this one of the new screensavers? I'm That's wondering pretty. that, too, because I've never seen that oh, one. Oh, it's an app. That's very pretty. Yeah. But that's not our that's not our topic of well it is sort of isn't it? Yeah, because all the, all the stuff has gotten updates. Yesterday, uh, Apple pushed 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 out uh, iOS fourteen point three, which includes a ton of stuff. But the one thing I've been waiting for the most, the one thing Apple released a press release about, is fitness. Plus, <laughs> plus. <Plu>. Oh. <laughs> now it's weird because to get fitness plus. You have to do some thingamajiggers. First of all, you need to update yeah. everything, especially your watch, because one of the key elements of Apple's new ten dollar a month fitness, uh, what do you call it? Uh, program, program, service, uh, service. Maybe it's better as a service. It's part of the. It's part of Apple One. That's how I'm getting it. I spend the thirty bucks to get the whole family. All of those bits, and the last bit we've been waiting for is Fitness Plus, but it it needs to be on your watch. So. I set it up last night. I'm all excited. And it says your watch is out of date. So you got to update your watch. You want to update your Apple TV. Really, you could use it with an iPad. You could even use it with an iPhone. You do have to have an Apple Watch to get the benefit of it. I guess you could do it without the Apple. I don't know. It says, where, where's your watch? So I guess you have to it's, have one. Yeah, it is. You, you absolutely are required to yeah. have the watch there as part of it, which is interesting to me because... It's it's an added feature almost for what the watch provides, right. but That's a that nice added is feature. exactly. And I think that part of that tie-in does feel a little bit more markety, where it's encouraging people to purchase an Apple Watch. The other thing uh, that's confusing is you need to download on i. Is it iPhone and iPad? You need to download an app. Just the iPad. Just the iPad. On the iPhone, yeah. it start. Oh, that's right, because you already have the fitness it's app there. It's built in. Yeah. And on the and it and it just p appears magically on the, <laughs> on the uh, Apple, TV. Apple TV. So it's a little confusing in that regard. And does it appear magically, or there is? Is there an app? There isn't even an app there's on the watch. There's not. Yeah, there's no app on the watch. Um, you have to download it on the iPad. It that that was one of the most uh, difficult parts of this. And in fact, in the press release, it doesn't really explain that I either. I had to go digging for the support document that told me how to get this all set up. So, so the uh, app that you have to download is called Fitness. Mm -hmm. Which is the app that some of you may note. It is the app that's on the iPhone. That's why you don't have to download it, it on the iPhone because you got it, right? It used to be called Activity. And right. they've changed you it recognize to recognize the rings. And, and so let me download it on here. Uh, you are, as I said, we, as we said, you already have it on the iPhone. So let me, let me go to the health and tap fitness. And there it is. And then you'll see there's a new tab at the bottom. There's summary. And all of a sudden, there's Fitness Plus. What I tell you, a couple of things I, right off the bat I love. First of all, the variety of stuff. Let me, uh, let me you know, let's do it here because it's a little bit easier to see on the, uh, on the iPad. The variety of stuff 
is phenomenal. Uh, mm -hmm. Hit, which is high intensity. That's that's the one. If you're if you're new to uh, fitness, that's all the rage these days. Where you do, uh, it's it's you do like uh, thirty seconds of really like you know hardcore like burpees, and then you take is it, is it a minute of burpees and thirty seconds off, then a minute, then thirty seconds off, and you do that a certain number of times. So that's what this high intensity work off workout is high intensity interval training yeah and they do some as short as 20 even 10 minutes so which i kind of like because you could do this a in fact uh, some fitness fitness vector experts <laughs> some experts in the fitness field say that it's best to do short bursts of this that's the whole idea of hit so maybe a couple of three times a day you do a little 10 minute one that's only 30 minutes but that's better than doing 30 minutes all at once right i love that they all have previews i love that about this Rotate over your front leg, stand right back up, and we'll keep alternating. They got some pretty good, pretty good. Let me um, let me put this on the Apple TV. So, so you actually can't AirPlay Fitness Plus. What? Um, yeah, you'll have to pull it up. The I'll app have to do on the, the app Apple TV. You have to pull TV. it up. Isn't that hysterical? Well, I'll keep playing it here. You can kind of hear it. Building. Let's take on these next ten minutes together. So look at that. That's hard work. So the thing I like is you're you're going to find there's still workouts for people like me who are too fat for hitness plus. So there's yoga. Who doesn't love yoga? Me. Uh, there's <laughs> there's core, core work, which is basically sit-ups. Just a lot of different ways of doing sit-ups. And you got Greg and Amir wanna, and Kyle and all your different trainers. Bettina. Say. A quick note. Yes. You'll notice that there are three people in in each of these workouts. Uh, one of the cool things about this, because yes. you'd mentioned, you know, some people can't. Yes. They have different levels of activity. So you'll notice that each person in these videos is doing something slightly different. That is so you can figure she's, out, do I, what do I need easy. to do? She's mm -hmm. medium. He's hard. He's hard. Hard. He looks like he does a lot of working out, doesn't he? I mean, it, yes. Should I brighten this up just a little bit, or is that... He is entirely a muscle. Yeah. He's all muscle. He's... It's the only thing I don't like about trainers. They look like they work out a lot. <laughs> I don't like that about it's them. It's so weird. <laughs> yeah, it's so weird. So, But there's also some oddball... I mean, treadmill is great. You know, treadmill is so boring, and many of us have treadmills... But mm -hmm. it's rare that you would see a workout. Peloton just started doing a treadmill workout. Did they? Yeah. I, I like this. Now, I should point out, and again, they have the range of everything from 10 to 45 minutes. I should point out that uh, they don't have three people on this. They just have one other right, person. Right, yeah, this is just the one Oh, no, person. wait a minute, they but, do. I was wrong. Oh, do they? So okay. she's doing it a little slower. Yeah, and in fact, if you go back to the, the last screen, there were two buttons. There was run, I believe it was, and then walk on the right side. And so there are... There's buttons here? Go back to the, like, close out of this. Oh, oh, you mean like this thing? Run or yeah, walk? Yeah, run and walk. So you could choose. So you choose oh, that's cool. So you could choose a hardcore one or a lighter lighter one. This is This is really designed for getting everybody. They are going right after Peloton. If you have a, a spin bike or a stationary bike at home... Uh, you could do the cycling one. Um, rowing, this is great for me, too, because I also have a rowing machine. And it's a fairly dull exercise, but uh, this way you can have somebody urging you on. But well, also, we should point out that you get choices of music. Throwback hits, hip-hop, R&B, pure dance, everything rock, latest hits. So you get, some, you get to not only choose the workout and the trainer, but you can choose the person you want to work with. And mindful cool-down which they probably should call stretch. Uh, yeah. Because that's really, if you look at it, geez Louise, that looks like they're stretching a lot. Uh, again, for some reason, all with really thin people. I, I, it, <laughs> <laughs> come on, where, where, are, my, where are my people? Uh, core, yoga, hit, strength, treadmill, cycling, rowing, dance. That, that's really kind of cool because there's such a variety of both trainers, of times, of of how hard you're working, and of what you're working with, I just think that's really great. Now the um, the uh, dance is not dance. Yeah, 
It's not. It's it's, 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 it's aerobics. Dance. It's aerobics. Yeah. But they, I think they probably don't want to call it that because somebody owns that. Um, should we should we do a little a little dance? Yeah. Let's do a preview. Because oh is... yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Oh yeah, I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. This Here we go. Me oh wow, he's really doing it now. Oh my goodness. Last week. He's like, oh well, he was really like. Let's go back because this was good. I want to do this. Oh oh yeah. Hey, uh, hey, yeah. <laughs> Let's see it. I can't oh, see hey, it. Oh, you can't see it. Um, I, you no. want to hear my sound effects? Okay. It's yeah, better just with the just sound the sound effects. effects, honestly. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's going so fast. Oh, wow. I he is. I'm going to pass out. He was getting into it there. Now, the dance one is honestly the most interesting to me. I well, this is good fitness. I already dancing. So, this is functional. Yeah. It's fun. They got good music. Now, should we do one? You want to do one? What can we do? Well, I guess we could try. They should standing. have chair exercises. I don't understand. Yeah. Um, let me let me take over the Apple TV, and I'll just because mostly I just want to show you what the watch interface looks like, right? Yeah, that's that's yeah. nice. Yeah. So we can see the watch interface. So let me uh, let's go over to the Apple TV, and you're gonna make me do a dance one. Should we go? Let's go. First of all, the first thing it does when you say let's go is it says, okay, start your watch. And let me show you real quickly because it immediately showed up on my watch, right? Dance with yes. Jehan. Okay. Should we do it? Now I could start yeah. it here or I could start it on the watch. I'll start it here. And uh, there my watch Oops. says ready. So it's, it's actually echoing the same thing that's happening on my watch right now. A good vibes well, and daily you. reminders to get you. you through any day. See, now it's showing, Every song it's showing has my, different moves. But don't worry. Watch. I'll be here to guide you with my watch. hands, my voice, and my body. So I only got one rule. Shall I do a little exercise? You mess up, He's guiding us with his body. He's only solo. got one move. Deal? Okay. Are you ready to I dance? I am ready. Let's go. Oh, and okay. by the way, uh, did you see first, that move he did there? That was American Sign Language. Oh, my gosh. You're kidding. All of the trainers learned ASL to be able to let people know when the training was starting. That's so cool. Okay. Okay. Let's find a beat. He's doing it. He's really doing it. Okay. Take over. Okay, take over. He didn't have to switch cameras while he was doing this. <laughs> okay, see my, right. my calories right, going go. up, my heart oh, rate's going up, right? Bad guys, go out. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, up. hey look, Mike is doing it too. Yay. Yay, Mike is doing it too. Oh, whoa, whoa, Michael, can you do that? Ho, 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 ho. My heart rate really going up now. Ho, 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 my. Hi, 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 hi. Okay, you get the idea. To your left. And if you don't, too bad. Okay. So the idea is <laughs> you're watching this on your phone, uh, on your iPad, on your Apple TV. You're making big, loud, funny sounds. You're getting out of breath. And then it's showing right on the TV how long you've been going, how many calories. I think that's great. That's essentially what uh, Peloton or one of these other systems do. How come my heart rate's still going up and I'm sitting Let's down? Let's take it back to the top. <laughs> top right left. Maybe it was delayed. So you need, I guess now the key on this is you need an Apple Watch, right? Yes, yes. Can you do it without so an that Apple is, Watch? No, no that is a requirement. Okay. And so that's one, one of the complaints, so to speak, mm -hmm. is that it requires an Apple Watch and people feel like that is them attempting to sell more Apple Watches. <sighs> um, but... I don't know. I there's plenty. Look, let's. If you go on your iPhone or iPad, there are plenty of apps that don't that do this without requiring an Apple Watch. Right. Most of them cost more. Well, I don't know if that's true. No, they don't cost more than ten bucks a month. That's a little pricey, to be honest with you, compared to, you know, uh, some of the other ones, Tony Hernandez and some of the other fitness apps on there. It's less. Do they than release a Peloton, new? Which is forty bucks a month. So. Although right. Do they, and do they release new videos every day or every week? Or I'm so? sure. I, think I can't. I don't know what the schedule is. I'm sure there will always be. And yes, end my workout. I'm. Oh, by the way, I should show you what happens when you end your workout. It then says you can add this as something you liked and you want to do more of. Right. Here, let's tilt it down. And then you can also. Uh, it encourages you to go into the mindful cool down, which is exactly, you know, what you probably should do. Instead of just going straight to work, you can share it. 
which means you can tell people how hard you're working. I should send that to my trainer. Ha ha! <laughs> I'm <laughs> doing it! <laughs> um, average heart rate, total time, two minutes, six calories, total calories, 10. Um, so this is good, and it shows how your rings... If you already are using a watch, as many of us do for fitness, this is a great natural adjunct. A lot of us can't go to the gym anymore. Um, right. This way you can do it at home. It, I think if you have an Apple TV, it strikes me that would probably be the best way to do it because you can That's... clear a space out in front of your TV. Um, but you know what? I you know When we can travel again, doing this in the hotel room... Uh, you basically have a trainer and a workout with you at all times. I, I think Apple, which has already done a huge amount for fitness, just with the, uh, the rings and the fitness app and the workout, uh, I think is going to do something even uh, as important with this, with Fitness Plus. I'm very excited about this. I think I, I have nothing but high praise for it. It is designed for people who are all in on the Apple ecosystem. You have... At least two mm -hmm. Apple devices. Yeah, I I'm excited about it as well, especially as I said the uh, the fact that they're updating it with new content regularly that keeps it from getting stale. And this is I, I talked about this a little bit on my podcast Clockwise, the democratization of these these types of studio based fitness programs where one typically would have to have both a gym a gym membership and then also have to pay an extra subscription fee to take one of these types of classes and here without the need for both the gym membership and the extra fee you are getting uh the the you know full studio right. uh experience whether and you I want to do rowing great. or yeah. whatever it happens now you're to be. alone but now, the timing is perfect for this cuz of covid-19 look at this too you also have the playlist which this is something i i i wish that uh, peloton would do they show you as they're playing the song but they don't and then of course cuz apple you know has music you can put the playlist again the tie in, in yeah. music and now you have the dance with john playlist for Apple Music, if you liked it, you can you can keep playing it. So I think that, oh my God, is there a new Taylor Swift? Oh no, sorry, it's just going to be on the Apple Music. <laughs> <sighs> I'm a little breathless. Okay, so um, that's the name of the album. No, <laughs> I'm a breathless. Uh, I think this is pretty good. Let's just look at the real quick. Let the, the uh, TV is connected. So now we're playing this on the TV. Yes, we are. Select the type of workout you this want to do. This is the promo then for trainer, it. trainer, time, and music. So apparently I can airplay time, this part. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't airplay the uh, workout. Uh, I haven't had enough for enough time to get to know the trainers. They all seem, no. as trainers do, fit, friendly, super happy, enthusiastic. super glad yeah. to be there. You know, when I work out, I make a lot of noise. Most of it moans. Most of it's screaming. <laughs> Um, but they they seem to be able to do all this and talk, which I guess yeah, is which is really impressive. Professionals, I actually I pay um, uh, people to do this for, for me. Would you like to exercise for me? Because I'll pay you. No, I pay people. To, I pay people. Look at they have a variety of body types, which I think is great. They're really encouraging people to do this. Uh, I I pay for a trainer uh, via FaceTime. Uh, a lot more than this. So this this really is, uh, I think it's great. Now, it's not personalized. So one of the things a, a right. trainer will do is say, oh, yeah, we want to work on this part. You're having trouble there. How did you sleep? How do your muscles feel? That kind of thing. That None of that customization is here. And so you're, uh, to some degree, as always with this kind of workout, you're responsible for your own well-being. You know, you if it's painful, you should stop. If you know, And I don't know how much they say that. I haven't heard a lot of that yet. But I haven't done enough of these uh, yet to really know. There is an advantage, I'm saying, to doing it with a human. But it's expensive. That's the disadvantage. And I guess you could say, yes. well, you got to buy an Apple Watch. That's a couple hundred bucks. And then this is going to be uh, 10 bucks a month. It's not cheap, but it's a lot cheaper even than a gym membership. So, mm -hmm. And if you already have an Apple Watch, then right. this is just the so, added expense. It's a no-brainer, yeah. Um, one of the things, so the, the strength workouts can be in most cases done without equipment. In fact, they have one of those three trainers doing it without, um, oh, nice. any, any equipment, but, uh, Apple has a website, uh, where they have curated 
oh, content MG. that you can purchase uh, oh. equipment. So iPhone stands for working out, dumbbells, they, they recommend indoor cycling bikes, actually, uh, rowers, I don't know. I have all um, this equipment. <laughs> yeah, you're already good to go. But yoga blocks, you, yoga mats, treadmills. you just treadmills. have the equipment, uh, you need somebody, I need, I'm not, Lisa doesn't. Lisa goes in there. One of the reasons we have all this equipment is we have a nice home gym and Lisa uses it every day for hours and hours and wow. hours. <laughs> no, maybe an hour or two a day. Uh, I I'm have impressed. to be prodded, uh, to do it. And so having a, for me, having a leader to walk me through, it makes a huge difference. I think partly because, uh, when I'm working out, my brain stops. And so I can never remember what do I do next? So it's nice to have somebody, mm. uh, tell you. Now, um, I am looking at a Mac Rumors article the chat room just sent along that yeah, said... Yeah, I'm seeing that too. It is designed to work with a watch, but it isn't strictly necessary. If you start a workout and you don't have a oh. watch, it'll say, do you want to do this without the watch? Just and you for can iPhone do it. and iPad. Yeah, you can do it. You just don't get any metrics. Uh, it does not work that way on the Apple TV. It's weird that the Apple TV... Is so so the Apple TV requires a synced and connected right. Apple Watch, but doing it on the iPhone or iPad right. does not. That's good. Okay, that that actually makes me happy because that means more people can use it. Um, yes. Because people may have an iPhone but not have an Apple Watch. People may have an iPad but not have an iPhone. I think that's or probably the largest watch. category is people who have an iPhone but no watch. That's mm -hmm. probably the biggest number of people, and the majority, I would guess. And so this is good. This is open to everybody who has an iPhone. I think that's great. Yeah. Thank you, Signet Ash, from the chat. And by um, the way, uh, I I have, I don't the stuff Apple's recommending you buy is expensive, and I don't you don't, yeah you don't the, have to the buy. yoga mat there is yeah. so pricey yeah so uh, any yoga mat will work you know a blanket on the floor will work so I I think Apple shows its affluenza here a little bit personally I like the cold hard floor against my back do you really. You work on the hard floor. I, just I need a. I need a. Facetious. I, the yoga mat I use, which is cheap, is almost like a net, and it's just for gripping. It's very uh. thin. It's not for padding, but because when you do downward dog, you want your feet to be well planted, and your fingers right. well, you don't you don't slide want, across. The <laughs> so, because <laughs> that's a downward splat. So, <laughs> it's it's nice to have a little grip. But you don't have to spend a hundred dollars on a yoga mat. You don't have to spend hardly anything. Um, so, and same thing for the uh, other equipment too. In fact, my suggestion is when you're looking for gym equipment, look for used, because what you'll find is the majority of people who buy gym equipment <laughs> buy it with the best intentions, uh, usually in the first month of the year, and never use it again. So these lightly used equipment you can get for a good deal and. Um, Probably just as good as if you buy it new. So look, for, you know, look that's for, a really look, good tip. Yeah, look for somebody who's who's finally realized. I guess I'm not going to use this. Uh, <laughs> save some money. Save then. a little money. Yeah, apples. Some only. of the things like treadmills uh, tend to wear out. They need a lot of maintenance. Maybe not the best thing in the home. Uh, a, a good gym quality treadmill is thousands of dollars. Uh, recumbent bikes or, or bike, you know. Uh, Stationary bikes are not as expensive. Even rowing machines. You know, they're, they're doing it with those water rowing machines. I just have a Concept 2. It's got a fan in it. It's fine. Uh, still a little pricey, but those Concept 2s never break. This, this is the trade-off. If you buy stuff that's intended for a commercial gym, it's, it's designed to be used all day, every day. 365 days a year, they tend to be more expensive, but also more reliable. The consumer grade yeah. stuff for a lot of this stuff is not. So, you know, it's up to you. It's up to you. You can spend a lot of money on fitness. The good thing is the dance, you can do it on your, you don't need anything. You can do it in your socks. Yeah. Yeah. Just do it, do it with your body. Do it with your yeah. body. Uh, so that's uh, part of quite what's a few new. of the exercises, frankly. Yeah. Yeah. That's part of what's new. Pro uh, Res Raw is now out. I should show people because I wasn't immediately clear to me how you get ProRes RAW to work. So uh, uh, this is obviously for the Apple phone. In fact, I don't think it makes any difference. I think you have to have a, um, an I, uh, iPhone 12 Pro, right, to take advantage Correct. of Correct. The 12 Pro or 12 Pro Max has Pro RAW, yeah. but the rest of them do not. So you might look in vain in the camera app. You, it, you won't find it there. You have to go to settings and then scroll down to camera and turn it on. So it's a new 
setting in the formats of camera, uh, Apple Pro Raw. And the idea about this, just we should explain, it creates a DNG file, which is Adobe's uh, open standard for RAW. RAW means it's going to take all the bits that the sensor is seeing, everything, unmodified, and store that in a file. That's a standard RAW file. And then the presumption is if you, if you just do that, you can't look at a photo because it's not, it's not going to look like a photo. It's going to look black and white. It's going to look weird. You have to process it with something like Adobe Lightroom, Affinity Photo, Pixelmator Photo, something that can take the raw pixels, the raw information, and turn it into an image. What Apple's done is kind of clever. So it stores all that image, but it also stores, in a, by the way, a 12-bit file, which is very high resolution, but it also stores the processing information in layers above that. So that makes it a big file, 25 megabytes Remember, this is a 12 megapixel sensor, so generally RAW is roughly equivalent to the number of megapixels. So the pure RAW file is probably half that size. But when you include additional information like uh, uh, white balance and, uh, and the color information and the exposure information and even adjustments that the computational photography makes, they include that. It's making a big file, 25 megabytes per image, but... It gives you ultimate control. You can work with a plain old RAW file in something like Affinity Photo, but you can also use apps designed for this, and there are more uh, more coming all the time that are designed to use Pro Raw um, to edit it. And and I think this is the best of both worlds: all the computational photography, but also all the raw material. And now, once you've done that, if you go to camera, you'll see uh, at the top. It says in the next to where the live on or off is, raw on or off is. And if you turn that on, now you're shooting in Apple ProRes. So you'll be getting all that information, but you'll also be getting giant files. So I, you know, you might want to be judicious in when you, uh, when you use that, but that's yeah. where that setting is. I think this is a huge advance in uh, camera phone photography. I'm very pleased to see them do that. Um, and one of the things is, with the update, of course, is the ability to both view and edit these pro raw video, or excuse me, photo files in the Photos app. Um, so, whereas obviously leading up to this, that was not an option. Um, you can edit those in uh, Mac OS and and iOS both got updates to support this, but I wanted to give a shout out to Halide Halide, uh, the app which takes advantage of pro raw in a very big way um, to kind of, as they often do, go farther than uh, what you would expect. So here, um, if we go into the settings app on Halide, uh, we'll swipe up and choose settings. And then I believe it's in capture. Um, you can see save pro raw. So of course, when raw is enabled, capture the pro raw files rather than the standard DNG, digital negative uh, files. But then also you can choose to reduce the bit depth so that if you feel like those, whatever, I can't remember how much you said now, 60 some megabyte files, uh, 25. you can actually, tw it's okay, not yeah. too bad. Yeah. Uh, not super bad. This is by the if way, you need to save some I space. You can the 512 gig phone. Because I was preparing because for Because we're taking, this yeah, we're taking the, uh, uh, the new 4K Dolby Vision Dolby video. video. Yeah. Exactly. So Halide goes farther here with this nice option to reduce the bit depth if you want. Um, so it reduces the file size by 50% um, if you need to. And then you can take photos. Now, one of the things, um, Leo, I shared with you the other day, I think it was in the iOS Today uh, channel was someone was taking photos with um, using Halide in the new Pro Raw format and did some, uh, oh, here, I think I can pull it up for people to see. Um, they were doing what's called shadow recovery. So essentially you take a very, very dark photo um, and they did it with Pro Raw and then they were able to recover so much detail from that photo, uh, despite the fact that it was taken. So here is, I'm pulling it up now. Here is the image as it was taken. 
uh, in pro raw format using very dark. Elide's new version. You see the sky. Super dark. This happens then, all the yeah, time in, in photography in. where you know you expose for a bright sky and you lose all the detail in the uh, in the landscape below. And then because it was that raw file, this is what they were able to get out of it. What? Yeah. Look at all the yeah. detail they were able to get out of this file. I remind you, this is what the photo looked like before. You zoom in and it doesn't look like there's anything down there at the bottom. They were able to pull this much detail out of that photo with Pro Raw. And I, I might point out that if you used Apple uh, cameras night mode, you would probably get that last picture. But yes. uh, you wouldn't have a lot of flexibility with it. One of the things that, that serious photographers don't like about the iPhone. I mean, everybody acknowledges this is an amazing camera, but when you just get the straight JPEGs out of it, that's pretty much what you see is what you get. And sometimes the camera makes bad decisions. So the idea here, you know, and that's why when you use a fancy camera, you have control of all of that stuff. But the idea here is the camera is going to capture everything as best it can. And then make its decision about what the initial JPEG will look like, but you get to modify it later. Generally, with a um, professional-grade camera, I will expose it, um, and you do this all manually, as bright as I can without clipping the brightest parts. So turn, I turn the exposure dial to the point where, and I'm usually using, uh, believe it or not, I'm using a histogram. I'm using readouts in the camera that show uh, clipping. And I'm looking and I'm turning it right up to the point where it's going to clip. Clipping means lose information in the brightest parts because I know I'll be able to pull up information in the darkest parts. So in effect, what I'm doing is saying, expose this as bright as you can with the presumption that later I'm going to go in and do exactly what, you, what was done with that picture, which is choose to bring up some of the darker parts. Because I've exposed it as bright as possible, I've got as much of the dark stuff as possible. So that all has to be done ahead of time. You have to do that. You know, think about that as you're taking a picture. It's second nature if you if you use fancy cameras. This way, I you know, I'm gonna just leave ProRes on all the time, or Pro Raw on all the time, because uh, I I think the iPhone's gonna choose in most cases the right picture. I'll give you an example. I took a firelight photo. In fact I probably have it on my photos here. A firelight photo uh, outside by the fire pit with a fancy camera and with the Apple uh, iPhone. And the iPhone overexposed it, in my opinion. It, it said, oh, you want to mm -hmm. see everything that's going on. And I didn't. I wanted the fire. I wanted the glow of the fire on people's faces. I wanted dark shadows. And th the fancy camera, I was able to accomplish that just in camera, twiddling with some knobs. Now, shooting that in Pro Raw, I'll be able to choose, do I want to see everything do I not? Because all of that information is stored. It does it automatically. So that's what happened with that picture. They exposed for the highlights as bright as possible. That's why the initial JPEG, you couldn't see any of the dark stuff. But all that detail was still in the file. That's what you're getting. I think that's a huge um, improvement. There, You will need specialized software. I mean, obviously, Apple Photos is going to support it with the update, but you'll need software that supports it. And by the way, Apple's, this is a proprietary format, which Apple licenses. In fact, they even say on the ProRaw page, there are third-party programs that uh, attempt to do this without a license, but uh, like uh, uh, FFmpeg. But if you're using those, you know, you're going to have, uh, it's going to be bad. So just, you know, in case... Here's the stuff you should use. People pay money to Apple to make apps that support Pro Raw. Um, so you're gonna, you know, it's an interesting conundrum. A lot of the iPhone uh, photo apps are very inexpensive. I hope Apple's license fee isn't too high because it would be nice to have this supported by everything. You know, Lightroom will and yeah. programs like that. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I'm sure Affinity Photo will. Yeah, you have to license it. It's not a. The DNG format is a standard format, but all of that computational stuff stored on top of it is not. Gotcha. Yeah, that's Apple's, you know, deep, you know, deep fusion and HDR and all the things Apple does. So, uh, let's see. What, what else? else is oh, new? this is this is wild, and I cannot wait to show you this. So, what what um, you may have seen a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of app updates lately. And part of that is because Apple's deadline for adding uh, privacy uh, labels came, came to be, came across. And so 
all of the apps in the App Store uh, in order to put out a new update as of that deadline. The next time they submit an app update, they have to be in compliance with Apple's new privacy requirements. And so uh, many apps that have put out updates have that privacy requirement. But I just want to I just want to want to, you know, walk you through. Uh, you, you just randomly picked an app here, you know, just a random app uh, that, you know, may or may not have some privacy implications. And that just so happens to be Facebook. Um, <laughs> oh, so you have to so scroll we, down we, a way to get to this uh, nutrition label. Yeah. So the nutrition label uh, for folks who are looking, you'll see these. Uh, I use these black headlines as a way to sort of navigate. So there's what's new, there's preview, there's ratings and reviews, and then there's app privacy. And this shows you all of the different app privacy. Now I like to click on the right or tap rather on the right side of the app privacy uh, headline is see details. When I choose see details, then it has all of the information. Now, this is an important point that I, I'm going to read this verbatim because I think that this is important that people need to touch on uh, or that people need to understand. The developer Facebook Inc. indicated that the app's privacy practices may include handling of data as described below. This information has not been verified by Apple. For more information, see the developer's privacy policy. So Apple requires a developer to add this information, but it is not then verified by Apple. It's not vetted by Apple. So it is on the developer to be honest, forthright, and forthwith about you, the, the things that they do. If you think about it, there's no way Apple could go into the Facebook offices and say, show us what you're saving. Exactly. So, so you can't expect Apple to verify this Um you, you you know they have they can verify what information is being collected but they can't really verify what the practices are uh, handling the data after it's collected so that's true in every case there are you know there's some incentive for companies not to lie there's potential prosecution and of late uh, we've seen a lot of government action on this so that's the risk also there's always the risk that somebody will discover what a company's doing and this has happened many times with Facebook. Uh, and then you have to apologize and continue doing it. So, you know, Facebook doesn't like to apologize. So there's some incentive not to reveal or lie about it in their privacy policy. But there's really no way to verify it, unfortunately. Right. So here, um, basically, Apple has given standard definitions for uh, these different types of content so that developers can go in and say, yes, I do this. Yes, I do this. Yes, I do that. And so there's actually a link and I'll tap on it really quick just so you can see. And it has privacy definitions and examples for every type of, of, uh, of this is section. Great. Yeah. So yeah, you get to really learn if you want to about how and what health information, financial information, what it means when it says this. And there was one actually, I didn't look at this before. Uh, I saw sensitive info and I didn't know what that meant. Here it shows sensitive info such as racial or ethnic data, sexual orientation, pregnancy or childbirth, uh, disability, et cetera, a political opinion, even genetic information and biometric data. This so is Facebook? Now, <laughs> the, well, so those are those are examples oh, of examples. what might be tracked. So but again, we have to see. There's only so much that the app has to rev tell Apple about. And so I don't think there's any setting in Xcode to say, are you collecting racial information? If so, check here. So Apple's right. just warning Instead, you. it's Facebook. You know how Facebook gets that is not they don't ask you <laughs> outright. They just encourage right. you to put that information in your profile, things like that. And so then Facebook has to say, yes, we collect uh, sensitive information. Because I want to be clear, what we were just looking at was a glossary of terms. Now we're going to look at what Facebook says they collect. So right. there, it's separated into different sections. The first one is data used to track you. This is data that is used to track you uh, across apps and websites that are owned by other companies other than Facebook. So Facebook is collecting this data and then other companies have access to it. There's uh, data used to track you with third-party advertising and then it shows you the information that's used. The developer's own advertising or marketing, analytics, uh, product personalization, app functionality, and, and then look here, other purposes. So we don't know what that means. And then this is, a, the, in my opinion, the most interesting part, data linked to you. The following data, which may be collected and linked to your identity, may be used for the following purposes. For third-party advertising, for developers advertising or marketing, for analytics once again, 
And look, look what's in analytics. Not only is there health and fitness, if you choose to give over your health and fitness information, but bum, ba, da, dum, sensitive info, that yeah, thing we just talked about. Yeah, but this is completely about. useless. First of all, enjoy this, folks, because you're never going to look at it again. This is the, <laughs> the first and last time you'll ever see this. And it's useless because it just, it's a may collect and doesn't, and they don't know what happens to it or if it is collected. So, but do you think it's useless in the sense that if I see a new app and I see it's available for free and then I look at the privacy thing and I go, you know what, actually, I'm not going to download that app. Yeah, I don't want to use it's that app. almost as if the nutrition labels on food said may contain sugar. It's the That's may fair. is useless. So there are certain things Apple knows because the app has to request that things like accessing your contacts or your camera, mm -hmm. all of that is important and is surfaced right at the top. Those are the intents that the application uses. That's all Apple really knows. And then the rest of it is may contain sugar. I think is useless. So the problem is- Because it might not be collected. It might your, or might not. That's what you're saying, and right? it doesn't say right. what they do with it. So right. they may know that. In fact, you probably can assume they do know that, but they don't know it because they've requested that information via the iPhone app. So this is, and it's voluntary, right? This is just something that Facebook wrote up and put there. And I, I have to point out, Facebook knows what it's doing. See how long that is? Mm -hmm. There's a reason oh, that's so long. Oh, I see, long. yeah. So it's you don't like, even... It's like saying, well, could contain uh, arsenic, sugar, we don't know. It's BS. So what you, what you should look at and what Apple does surface right up top is what permissions does the application require? And the whole idea of this nutrition label is... It's, it's easy to digest. All that stuff underneath, you're never going to look at because it's meaningless. That's fair. Now, I should point out that yesterday, the Federal Trade Commission required nine different tech companies to tell them how they collect and use data. So this is something now I think Facebook's going to probably get serious about. They're, on, you know, they're being sued by 46 states, the federal government, and Guam and Washington, D.C. right now over this kind of monopolization stuff. The FTC is looking at privacy. I suspect Facebook is going to be more circumspect about what it says and what it does because of that scrutiny. And, you know, by the way, you know, the, the people that, that FTC is asking are Amazon, TikTok, Discord, Facebook, WhatsApp, Reddit, Snap, Twitter, YouTube. But I don't know what the law enforcement is. This is a study separate from mm -hmm. law enforcement. So I imagine these companies will probably do something like what you just saw here. May contain sugar. Maybe not. Um, this is useless to me. But what is very serious, and I think what people are very up in arms about, especially advertisers, is the stuff above it where it says, well, here's what the app actually is collecting. That's the stuff you should look at. All of the rest of it uh, is fog of war. It's intentional on Facebook's part. <laughs> you know, yeah, well, we might be collecting this. Don't know. You'll never That's know. Fair. Could be that. So look at it if you want, but I, I don't know if it's telling you much. You know what I'm saying? That's a, that's a fair point. Yeah. Well, I don't know. You can uh, disagree why don't we take with me. A, it's just I'm no, no, just no. I think at the end of it, yeah, you are right because, as you said, it's not as if any of those are necessarily what you're collecting because it depends on what you share there. So yes, right. um, the, and the only thing so, you know so, is what is above that in that box where it says it definitely collects this, 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 and this, and then you have to think in your head, do I want that information? But that's much less right. granular, right? And the other problem I have is a lot of times because there's such broad buckets. Uh, for instance, if a, if an app uh, is supposed to be able to share something from photos, the broad bucket is can read, write, and modify your photos. People look at that and they go crazy. But it doesn't mean that that app wants to do that. It just means <laughs> right. that in order to have that permission, they had to ask for all of that stuff. So, you know, I think nutri nutrition information on food has been very, very helpful, right? Uh, those nutrition labels are great. I'm hoping. Wait, is that sarcasm or? No, no. I think they have. You can look at the oh. calories. You can look at the carbs. You can look at the pro. That stuff is useful. There's lots of little things underneath in the ingredients. You know, there's 15 different names for monosodium glutamate, and they're never going to use the <laughs> name. There's many, many names for sugar, 
you know, including, you know, yeah, high, you know, glucose, sucrose, oh, no, high you know, you see, some of them are even wor- like ridiculous, like that's sugar. Uh, so they use that ingredients list to obfuscate. I think this is like the ingredients list. It's like, okay. C6H1206. Yeah, right. <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> oh, um, that we should take good. a break. It's carbon. <laughs> hey, let's talk about our, uh, our sponsor. I, you know, this is the time of year where we, uh, we give thanks to uh, people who have been so important to us all year long. I thank, for instance, you, Micah Sargent, for joining our crew and uh, really making this be a a great year for us. And I have to thank LastPass because, as you know, they bought studio naming rights. We're in the LastPass studios. They've been very supportive of all of our shows, including a number of new untried shows. Uh, They're a great company, and I I, I think I want to thank them over and above just the ad for the support that they've uh, given us all year long. And really, they support us in a couple of ways. Of course, the advertising is one. The other way is by protecting our stuff. Uh, we've been using LastPass. I started using LastPass when it first came out 12 years ago. Have used it nonstop ever since. I remember about 10 years ago, I, I had been har- haranguing Steve Gibson, our Security Now host. I said, you got to try this LastPass. He finally said, all right, all right. And he, and he called him. Joe Segrist, the creator of LastPass, took Steve on a virtual tour of the software, you know, looking under the hood and how it works. Steve was very impressed. In fact, the only reason I know it's 10 years ago is because that episode came out, I can't, I'm kind of mind boggled, 10 years ago. You can, you can watch that episode of Security Now where he explains all the things LastPass does and how they do them right. Steve's been using it ever since. He was so impressed, still uses it. Uh, we started using LastPass Enterprise Oh, about five years ago, I think, when we found out that some of our employees were perhaps not as good with password hygiene as we would have hoped. Um, (laughs) Now they are. You know why? Because LastPass makes it easy. It's not inconvenient. It's actually more convenient. And that's kind of the thing LastPass does. It's kind of remarkable. Normally, it's a trade-off. More secure means less convenient. Not with LastPass. Things like single sign-on. Uh, means many of our employees can just use their phone and say, yep, that's me, and they're in. No password needed at all. Multi-factor authentication means we know exactly who's using what, when, and where, not just by their password, but also by additional authentication features, touch ID, face recognition, geolocation, you know, their GPS coordinates, IP address, all of that information means we can be sure that the people who are accessing our most vital resources, our bank accounts, our our databases, things like that, are people who should be. LastPass gives your IT department, your security people, the ability to take control of password security. They have a central dashboard. They could see exactly what's going on. In our case, it's Russell. Uh, No matter how you keep track of employees, LDAP, or whatever you use. LastPass integrates directly with it for onboarding users, for revoking access, for syncing groups. You know, anytime that Russell, we need to add an employee, Russell can do that so quickly, so easily. You also get security scores, dark web monitoring, so you can see if your password hygiene is okay, and even alert employees when their credentials may be at risk. This is all built in the LastPass. Every employee, I could see I could see password scores. I can gain access to shared accounts, monitor group memberships. You can have admin privileges. For instance, we've organized it this way, and this is one of the things LastPass makes very easy, into different operating groups. There's the operations, studio operations. There's business department producers, things like that. And you can have an admin in each category that can admin that category but nothing else. So you can kind of have very granular permissions that allow you to, you know, kind of delegate and keep people in control of what's going on in their department. A solid cybersecurity strategy is super important at any time, but especially now with employees working from home. It's it's just vital that you protect your assets. LastPass's zero knowledge security model protects everyone from the individual user to the biggest organization. A strong encryption, local only, only on device is your data decrypted, never anywhere else. Your master password is never transmitted anywhere. That's kept on device. You have 100 policies as the IT department to say, uh, as we do, two factors required. 
If, if for our employees using LastPass, they have to use two-factor. Uh, you can uh, say things like, this is you know minimum requirement for master password. You can really ensure security. Don't wait till your budget you know, in January to take control of your security. This is a very risky time right now. Lots of attacks going on. Now's the time to get LastPass. Go to lastpass.com slash twit. Find out how they can help you. Lastpass.com slash twit. It's the password manager I use and trust at home and here at Twit. And we thank you, LastPass, for your support of iOS Today. We thank you for supporting iOS Today, dear listener. If you go there, lastpass.com slash twit. Okay, thank you for the interruption, Micah. What's next? Yes. Mm. Um, well, of course, AirPods Max uh, is supported in all of the new versions you, of iOS. Don't you love John Gruber's uh, review uh, on Daring Fireball? The title of his review, Heavy is the Head that Wears AirPod Max. <laughs> Very heavy headphones. We're not buying them. I'm not buying them. No. Nope. No. Nope. You can nope. if you want. Nope. Nope. No interest. No interest. Too heavy. <laughs> too, too exactly. Too, too expensive heavy. and too heavy. That's it's, it's a buck expense. thirty-eight a gram. That's crazy. It's ugh, <laughs> that's that's uh, worse than Chanterelle so mushrooms. <laughs> uh, Cheaper than cocaine. Um, okay, I'll grant you that. Fair, fair. Not that I know uh, what cocaine what else... prices are these days, but I'm just saying. Yeah, I was I'm guessing say, it's more than a buck thirty-eight. Money. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see what else has come in iOS. Oh, um, the there've been some new weather updates. So, of course, we knew that uh, Apple bought Dark Sky, the weather application that a lot of people used, both on Android and on iOS devices. Um, Apple purchased that. And so there have been some rollouts of different features there, um, including now, this is, this is of course coming from different sources, but uh, it's air quality data. Um, and so we've had it here in the United States for a little while in maps and in uh, the weather app itself. But, and then that way we got it on our Apple Watch. But in other places, it was not available. Now it's available in the China mainlands. Ooh. Plus, you also get air quality health recommendations mm. uh, in the U.S., the U.K., Germany, India, and Mexico. So if the air quality gets poor enough, it will start to offer some recommendations for things that you should do uh, to improve your air in your home and to sort of, you know, step away from maybe being outside. Um, and then also air quality data in areas um, for Germany and Mexico. So that's, that's nice that we've got uh, more there as well. Plus, one of the, the changes to the Apple TV app um, on both the iPhone and iPad is that it's Apple has made it easier for you to find their content. So down at the bottom, it used to be Watch Now, Library, and Search. I think we're just the three. Now there's a fourth tab called Originals. And so this is all of Apple TV Plus uh, original content well, available to you. Well, I guess that's good because I guess they needed to do that because it was a little weird how it was all mushed together, I guess. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of content, so I guess, but I guess there's more. No. This, this shows off that there's more than there used to be, right? Yeah, but look at, I mean, a lot of these little rows here are all for one thing. One show. This is all yeah. for a Charlie Brown Christmas. Right. Yeah, Apple's um, been doing that for a while with Apple TV Plus. <laughs> Give a show a whole row. It looks like you got a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah. I, I feel bad for the, the editorial team for Apple TV Plus. They're like, uh, what do we do with this whole section? I guess we'll just it make kinda, it all one thing. It's not completely their fault. COVID slowed down production for everybody. So um, there's yeah. some good stuff uh, on Apple TV Plus, actually. Um, there's some shows I've, I think they've. Well, Ted slowly, Lasso is amazing. Yeah, that's, I love the, that that's show. the big hit. Mariah Carey's magical Christmas special. Mm. I do not like Mariah Carey at all. <laughs> she's a I good singer. I don't even singer. want to talk about her. She's got a lot I, of range. She, could, she was a good singer. Well, anyway, she's not a great actor, but... Uh, uh, she's not a good person either, so... Neither a good person, a good actor, so don't watch that one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Charlie Brown Christmas, that's, all, that's the gift that keeps on giving. On the Rocks always. wasn't bad. That's the Bill Murray... Um, a movie that's, you know, Sofia Coppola wrote, Rashida Jones is in it, Marlon Wayans is also a terrible actor, by the way. Um, yeah. 
So um, there's some oh, good we, stuff. We the Bruce know. Springsteen documentary, I enjoyed that. You know, that is the actress Rashida Jones, as opposed to the uh, other Rashida Jones who just took over at. Um, oh crud! Now I can't think. Was it MSNBC? Oh really? Rashida There's another Jones. Rashida Jones, huh? Yeah. Wow. So MSNBC named Rashida Jones president of oh. of MSNBC. I thought, boy, she's and really doing everybody double thought duty. it was. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Now They're I'm like, excited no, about it's this. The other Rashida Jones. Servant season two is coming. Did you, did watch, you watch this the first season? Yeah. That I was did not. Spooky. But it's just he's hit or miss and mostly miss. It's M Night Shyamalan. Did he I don't think he. Off? actually uh, had anything to do with this. <laughs> <laughs> That's why. He just why put his worked. name on it. I think he's like, you know, it's one of those where he's like the executive producer, but he didn't write it, direct it, oh. you know, he, he, he didn't even... He sort of just nods at the... Yeah, he didn't, I don't think he even showed up for a cup of coffee. I mean, I think he's just, you know... But uh, there's just some good stuff. It's funny, remember they made all this big deal about Steven Spielberg's Amazing Stories? Did you watch any of these? No. No. I haven't uh, watched a lot. The only Apple TV Plus content that I stuck with was Ted Lasso. I've yeah. not watched anything else since then. This is a great movie, the Tom Hanks movie, me. Greyhound. Really enjoyed it. Highly recommend was it? that. Was yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's uh, World War II, you know, boat crossing the ocean, Nazis. Um, boat drinks. They got a ways to go. They got a ways to go, you know, because they started from scratch, right? They're no Disney Plus. Let's put it that way. But it's good mm -hmm. that they have a separate tab for their originals because then it makes it easier for me to find what I don't want to watch. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, you could. Just, it's all sequestered. <laughs> yeah, just keep that over there. Yeah. Morning for All Mankind wasn't bad. Morning show, not great. They, they're making it again. They're actually shooting now. I know. Yeah. I don't know yeah. why they're doing that because, yeah. you know, it just... Okay. Uh, okay. Just thought should I'd... I... I don't know. That, I mean, yeah, it's there. Um, let's see. Somebody I, said Tiny I, I really World is very good. Scooter X likes tiny, tiny World. Tiny World? Tiny World, yeah. Oh, that's the one that, where they shot it. it. It's all very small uh, <laughs> sounds, stuff. Sounds about yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> tiny like Things. That. Tiny Things, yeah. Tiny World. It ain't no Netflix. Let's put it that way. There you go. Um I think that's going to cover it for the updates. Oh, what? Well, this is a let, big no, update. Before, yeah, and I, before we move on to the news, actually, I do want to do a quick round out um, because let's talk about, and I'm going to go to apple.com slash apple, I think it's apple hyphen one. Um, let's do a quick, oh, I want to yeah. hear your thoughts yeah, I bought on this. the- yeah. Yeah, so you have an Apple One subscription, which uh, for this subscription, depending on which one you get, because there are different plans, there's uh, $14.95 a month to get Apple Music, Apple TV+, Plus, Apple Arcade, and iCloud, a 50 gigabyte storage plan. Family, you get the same thing, but you get a 200 gigabyte storage plan. And then Premiere, which gets you all of what you got before, except a two terabyte storage plan, plus Apple News Plus and Apple Fitness Plus. So I think so that's- for 30 bucks a month, you get all of that. If you're going to buy a bunch of these, I think it's a great deal at 30 bucks because I could share really it with good deal. five people. Um, they show you what the savings would be. I use Apple Music. I use Apple TV Plus. Arcade, you know, I do for the show. I don't have to, but that's only five bucks a month. It's nice to have two terabytes of iCloud storage, especially if you're sharing with five people. You're going to need that much. News Plus, not that crazy about. But Fitness Plus, Music, uh, and TV, if you put the three together, are still more than 30 bucks a month. So I think that this is a good deal. You know, you could say, well, the storage is free almost. So I think that's a pretty good deal. Um, I think this is Apple's trying to get more revenue per customer because they've kind of saturated the uh, number of people who want iPhones and iPads and so forth. There's not a lot of growth in the U.S. anyway. But um, there is a good little, if you go to the, um, um, I think they had a comparison in prices if you go somewhere on this page. And you can try it for free. Um, mm -hmm. 
So, so let's, let's kind of, I, I want to hear your thoughts, you know, on the year past, because you, of course, Apple music's been around for a while. Um, are you, do you still use Apple music as your main music streaming service or, yeah. you know, you, I'm an, uh, you and I are one? unusual because, uh, for our job, we have to look at a lot of different products. Um, mm -hmm. Lisa asked me, why do you have five password managers? I said, well, I use LastPass, <laughs> but I have to keep up on what everybody else is doing. Uh, you know, no one should have five password managers. That's just a recipe right. for disaster. But it's something I have to do. Similarly, uh, I have many music services. I have Pandora. I have uh, YouTube Music, the new YouTube Music, Apple Music. I finally did get rid of Spotify. Not because I, I still think it's probably the best of the bunch. But how much music can you listen to? Right. Uh, so I do have Apple Music. And I, I'm not, you know, my, but again, my use case is also a little weird because um, one of the reasons I have Apple Music is my best stereo equipment is attached to the TV in the living room. And I needed a way to play music through that equipment. There's an Apple TV there. It just, you know, when I want to listen to Christmas music, uh, the easiest thing for me to do is to go to Apple Music because it's built into the Apple TV, and then I can play it. And it's also high quality. Um, you know, I also have Amazon's uh, HD Unlimited service. That might that arguably offers higher quality music, and you can put it on your Apple TV. So occasionally I'll use that. Um, I don't think Apple Music, just like Apple TV+, Plus. I don't think it's the best of the bunch. I think probably you have Spotify still, right? Yeah, I'm Spotify and Apple Music. Those There's are a reason two. why you have Spotify. Yeah, and and so Sp Apple Music is my music library application. It is where I keep all of the music that I've ever actually purchased, and then all of the music that I download uh, and albums. And I'm mostly an album listener. I listen to an album all the way through. So Apple Music, when I know exactly what I want to listen to, Apple Music is my go-to. But when it comes to wanting a DJ, Spotify is the much DJ. Better. It's much, much better, better at being a yeah. DJ. And that's everybody seems to agree on that. Um, I would say, yeah, yeah. Apple Music is not best in class in any area except maybe the if you like the radio stations but they're not that's not my music the radio stations so i the kind of music i mean i also have prime phonic which is classical music <laughs> i have i have wait at least five music <laughs> streaming services um and when i'm going for quality i'll usually use the amazon now my 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 entire music collection is stored on three of those five uh, it's it's stored on YouTube Music because I uploaded everything there. It's done on Apple Music. I use uh, Apple Music's Match. Everything's uploaded there. And Amazon has all of my songs. So there are three different services that have all my music. So that's not... And you can do that apparently with Spotify, although I haven't found it to be... I didn't find it to be easy. I don't know. You, you haven't tried to upload all your music to Spotify? No, um, I did that one time and it was a mistake. Yeah. And so yeah. never again. I think I think your use case is exactly right. And since most people choose a music service for the discovery, for the stations and the DJs and stuff, most of the time, I think I'm the same way. I'll say, I want to hear some cool jazz tonight. And I want the cool jazz station. The, Spotify is the best cool jazz station. Uh, Apple's cool jazz introduces stuff that I don't consider cool jazz, for instance. So, yeah, I think Apple still has a way to go on Apple Music. But if you want a good deal, 30 bucks, and you got that, if you're not like me and Micah, where we have to try many, many things. Right. You know. What about Apple Arcade? Are you still playing it. games in I Apple quit Arcade? I it, and then I realized I had to keep it for the show. Right. That's the only reason you, I would. You're the it. game guy, of yeah. the two of us at least. Uh, I there's a certain sameness about the Apple Arcade games. They are ah, uh, that's fair, isn't it? There, I can't, mm -hmm. I don't know if I can put my finger on it. Um, but honestly, there are better games out there. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah, and if I'm going to spend, it's not just the money; it's time. Really, the biggest investment in any game is the amount of your life that you devote to it. And I don't find any of the games on arcade 
worth spending on. Grindstone I spent some time with, eventually tired of. Um, you know, Sneaky Sasquatch, which is the Apple Award winner, mm -hmm. um, is fun. It's no Among Us. No, it's, it's, uh, yeah, I don't know. There's, there aren't a lot of, uh, I mean, even for, uh, I, I don't know. I just haven't really seen a lot of people get jazzed about Apple Arcade. Um, uh, that there's some standout game that really blew people away in Apple Arcade yeah. and you've hit the nail on the head there. It is, uh, there's a sameness to all of right. the games. Right. And I don't know if that is, that's the thing is, is it a mandated sameness? Is it that Apple is looking for very specific, a curated slash mandated? I mean, through curation, you get mandation. I don't know if that's an actual verb, but anyway. Um, <laughs> mandation through, through curation. curation. You get, yeah. yeah, mandation through curation. And so you get that sameness in almost in art style in many cases, and certainly in game play. But that's depressing to me because I don't want to believe that the only way for you to get fun and uh, continually playable games is through that free-to-play nonsense that the other games have, that you have to have all that gross stuff. I do like that, that Apple work. put a, planted a flag in the sand and said, look, no in-app purchases. I like mm -hmm. that. I have to say my favorite game right now is on the Nintendo Switch, Animal Crossing, one-time purchase, it would lend itself to in-game purchases, and they are Nintendo is foregoing billions of dollars by not doing that, and I admire them for not doing that. Uh, that is easily, in my opinion, the game of the year. And here's I'm going to go out on a limb, and I don't know if this is true, but there is, it seems to me, the same flaw in Apple Music, Arcade, and Apple TV. There is something about it that just doesn't grab you. They don't, there's nothing where you'd go, man, that's, that's Game of Thrones. That's, right. and I think the reason, I think you nailed it. The reason is a heavy-handed approach from Apple corporate. I think they have sanded off the rough parts. Mm -hmm. That's their goal. But by doing so, they've also eliminated the standout thing that makes people love Spotify, that makes people love the Nintendo Switch, that makes people love, say, Netflix. It, you're not getting that breakout, unique ingenuity. Um, and, you know, music, Apple Music has the same playlist as everybody else. So that's the one that's closest to everybody else because all the music is the same. And but But again, it's the curation the organization, the way you make playlists, all the little user interface features, and Apple sanded off the rough edges. It's very vanilla in mm -hmm. all three cases. So I'm going to go out on a limb and say that that's the problem. You know, they always said with HBO that the reason HBO had such good content is because they were hands off. They would give tons of money to the most talented creators and then say, have at it. Do whatever you want, and and creators loved in the in the you know the heyday of HBO. That's long gone now that AT and T owns them. But in the heyday of HBO, I would talk to creators. I said we love doing stuff for HBO because they give us they support creativity. I have a feeling that people go to Apple TV, for instance, because the money's there, but that the environment does not encourage real creativity. So, and the top creatives are not at Apple TV. They really aren't. So anyway, yeah, that's I, that part. I especially that's an editorial with. on my part. Um, and Apple, I think Apple wants to have a sanded off experience across the board. Apple doesn't want anything to stick out. <laughs> that's not <laughs> Apple, right? Apple wants it to be kind of whole and unified. And there's something to be said for that. Uh, users seem to like it, but that is a problem, I think, when it comes to uh, creativity. Artists stick out. True artists stick out. Mm. Like a like a broken thumb, true artists stick out. Yeah. That's, That's what, what uh, was that Confucius? Ah, uh, Lao Tzu, I think, said that in oh, Art of War. Oh, thank you. Yeah, Lao Tzu. Yeah. 
That's yeah. right. Yeah. That's yeah. Sun Tzu or whatever. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that is Sun Tzu. <laughs> oh, Lao Tzu is the Tao Te Ching. Okay. Anyway, on we go with the show. <laughs> on we go. Enough I philosophy. Think it's time for news. News. What do you think? Let's, let's, the news. Let's get the latest news in just a bit. All right. And that's the All right, bit. So first up. Now let's do and it. That's the bit. We took the bit. <laughs> it's just a bit. Um, uh, first things first. I'm the realist. No, um, everybody should be updating all of their devices. We talked a little bit about iOS updates, but um, a HomePod update just rolled out for the HomePod and the HomePod Mini. Um, no new features that we're seeing in this uh, initial update, but you can go into... Um, let me hold on. I got to get my face close enough to the iPad. All right, there we go. We've done that. Um, so you need to go into the uh, iPad app, and, or excuse me, the iPad app, the home app, and uh, tap in the top left corner, there's the home button, and then choose home settings. And then you will see, uh, if you scroll down, software update, and then choose software update. And here is where you will see that pop up. So right now, because my HomePods are up to date, I keep them automatically updated. Uh, mine's not in there. But the update will pop up here, and it will download, and then you can choose to update your HomePod right there. Uh, the other thing that got updated was watch OS and a few things, of course, fitness plus, we talked about that being part of the update, but another thing that's coming are some new cardio fitness notifications. So when I uh, first did this, when I first updated my watch and I went into the uh, health app on my iOS device on my iPhone, it actually popped up a notification, um, that let me know some information about what um, what all of this would involve. So the new cardio respiratory fitness stuff includes the ability to view your cardio fitness level. Mm. So it um, takes your VO2 max information and pairs that with a, your heart rate and other stuff that is gathered over time and calculates that all together and then gives you an impression of wow. your cardio fitness. What, what app is that? This is just the health app for iOS. It's just, this in, is it's just, just the in the health, health app. app. Well, that's yeah, really so cool. It's super, super cool. Um, that's so an what example you of do, using all the stuff they know about us to good effect. And effects. that's what I've been waiting for yeah. is this, what is a quantified self. Yeah. Now, I'm not going to show you mine because it needs to be updated. It's taking some older data from July. And so it's kind of disappointing. So I'm should, not showing it to you. Should we do it on mine? I don't sure. know what it's going to so say. So I'll show you how to get to it. Here, it was really um, noisy on December 4th. Um, <laughs> so you you want to choose ooh, a browse ECG down at the bottom. The new capabilities. There you go. Here you okay. go. Okay, now I'm going to continue. Mm -hmm. Results, sinus, atrial now, fibrillation. Wow, look at that. The ECG app has been updated to be able to take ECGs even when you have a high heart rate. Uh, it used to be that it would not do a... Um, it would say that it was inconclusive. And for those of us who have naturally high heart rates, like myself, if I did an ECG, it oftentimes would say, I'm sorry, I can't read your, your ECG because your heart rate is so too look, high. So these are all the, the, the... I didn't even ask it to do these. These are all... Or maybe I did. Maybe I no, did. No, those were definitely... Yeah, those, those are, are all those active. Were asked. Okay. Um, so um, I don't have AFib. Go, correct. Yeah, good. No reports yeah. of that. Uh, go to the Browse button down at the bottom. Okay. Uh, bottom right. Yep. And then choose Heart. Let's browse through my heart. And you are on iOS, the latest version, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, cool. Walking heart rate, uh, average heart rate, resting heart rate. I don't wear it at night, so that actually is a little higher than uh, my night resting heart rate. Heart there rate you go, variability. Cardio Fitness. Cardio Fitness. Is that... Choose that. Choose this. Okay. Oh, so it hasn't gotten better or worse. It's but it gives. Oh. You, so let's see over the year. Oh, look, it's going down. I'm getting less fit over the year. Actually, can I have you go back to the last screen because that's not what it should look like. Um, if you, because that's an actual reading. Uh, scroll all the way down to the bottom of this page, and do you have cardio fitness notifications? Choose that. Oh, there you go. Th yeah, you haven't set it up yet. Set okay. up. Okay. Set up. So this is gonna. This is going to tell me what sex I am. That's good. 
Uh, it says, it needs to know if you're taking calcium blockers or beta blockers. No. Okay. Factors that can lower your cardio fitness, age, heart conditions, lung conditions. So this is all informational at this point. Uh, and here's the note. So now I'm going to get notifications with my, oh, uh, for, for my heart health in the last four days has, has been below average. I forgot to wear my watch when I worked out yesterday. That's, a, that's unfortunate, right? Because yeah. this is only yeah, as good should, as your, that does as your yes. consistency. Um, that's good. Mine is mine is below average as well right now. Yeah, um, but I'm working on improving that. Yeah. Uh, that's and that's based on VO2 max or yeah. Uh, yes. Is. So it yeah. says yeah exactly. It, it this is a measurement of your VO2 max, uh, but it's also uh, it uses that along with I've been um, below average the other for six months. Watch. For six months. <laughs> yeah, I know exactly what happened six months ago. I started eating donuts. <laughs> now, my oh, fitness went down. Is? My weight started going up around about then because of COVID and overeating during, you know, quarantine. And I think mm. that that's directly related. So that's really good feedback, actually. Um, you know, that's saying, look, dude, your VO2 max. So this tells you uh, more about it. Exactly. Yeah, and it's, do. I think what's good about that is what the heck for most of us is VO2 max. Right. I don't know, but actual cardiovascular fitness, right. that tells me something. I, I can understand, oh, I'm below average. Right. And for folks who don't know kind of what that is, it is your body's ability to get oxygen to the places that it needs to get it. Uh, that is the measurement of VO2 max. It is how well your body is processing that oxygen and getting it to the red blood cells and especially with your heart. Um, and so, you know, muscle soreness and those kinds of things uh, are a result of a poor, are more of a result of a poor VO2 max because when, well, no, I'm not going to go into it. I could, I could go Ask into- Ask your doctor, uh, boys and girls. <clears throat> yeah. Basically, lactic acid buildup uh, causes a lot of muscle soreness and the poorer your VO2 max- the more lactic acid buildup you're going to have, the sore your it, muscles will it be. It even after explains how it's related to age. It's different for men and women. This is this is really great. I love, and yeah. that's it's kind of buried. But if you are at all interested in this stuff, which in my opinion everyone should be the least bit interested, because look, we've got to pilot these meat sacks for as long as our lives are uh, exist, and. To not know as much as you possibly can about this meat sack you're pilot piloting, I think is uh, a disservice to your ambulatory meat sack. Like, why would you not want to learn as much as you possibly can about this device that you use to move around this is with? Right. They they've really got a lot of heart rate variability, cardio, fitness, blood pressure. Uh, of course, it's only as good as the information you fed it. So uh, right. So you want to give, you know, and if you're, you know, for instance, there's no way to take blood pressure with the current Apple Watch. So this is based on readings that I've taken, I guess the last time was August 13th. So, um, you know, probably I should do this more often so I can add, add to this. This is great. Now, the only thing that concerns me is normally to measure VO2 max, you'd, you'd actually have to, I mean, wear a, a little mask during a stress test or... It, but so this is projected based on what the Apple Watch sees in your blood. I have to say, say it feels like it's accurate. Um, and by the way, because I'm uh, in my 60s, that level is lower than it would be if you were a young person. Don't judge your your uh, fitness by my fitness because I'm an old man. But this, uh, I think this is any kind of information is good. I like yep. it. Thank you for sharing um, that with I me. I didn't know about that. Super cool, and that's all new. So, folks, you do need to go into the health app to get that all set up. Um, and then the other shout out for the watch OS, or excuse me, the the updates is um, a lot of new or several new features for um, health, and in particular for folks who are able to get pregnant. So, um, there's the ability to indicate pregnancy, lactation information, contraceptive information. All of that becomes part of this cycle tracking uh, app so that, again, uh, you can better manage your fertility windows and things like that. So I love that they're adding these features. This has come so far. I mean, look at all the features. And there's respiratory, too. 
blood oxygen. Symptom tracking yeah. is a is another one, so you can yeah. um, well, this better is, track whenever this you're is Ill. very valuable. Yeah, if you if you were worried about COVID, to see your blood oxygen, and it's doing this one automatically because I haven't done blood oxygen reading in a while. So this is this is really great. Um, forced expiratory expiratory volume measures how much air you could force out of your lungs. How would I measure that? I must there must be some. Some device. Yeah, I think that's when you'd have to in, enter manually, probably, yeah, or use or connect it to a device. I connect. Yeah, there's like a Bluetooth. A lot of things. You know, I just got a. And I'm going to talk about it later. I just got a new toothbrush that I connected to Apple Health. So. Oh no, you're going to sell me on this toothbrush because <laughs> I've been thinking about getting one of these. <laughs> I'm oh just no, saying, I don't. You know, I mean, I suspect that uh, this is this has kind of crept up on us. We've been talking about the quantified self since Fitbit came out years ago. But look at all the things it keeps track of now. This is really amazing. Here's my environmental sound levels. I, I think this is really uh, fantastic. So headphone noise levels. Again, it's very Apple because it, it works as long as you've connected everything up to your, mm -hmm. your iPhone. Um, I don't know if my sleep... Oh, yeah, sleep is in here too. Wow, that's great. I'm I'm looking forward to in continued improvements on this to where like you you didn't know that all this data was in there or maybe you know you weren't aware necessarily I didn't. and so I'm looking forward to the time when Apple is able to take all of this data and do more with it to take it and say hey Micah we've noticed that on Wednesdays your sleep is typically worse and by looking at the fact that you uh, have your caffeine later in the day on Tuesdays wow. and you uh, you know those kinds of things and your heart rate is is typically up does that mean that you're eating right before you go to bed, all those different things, combining those together and actually giving me some actionable information, that is what I'm waiting for. And uh, so I am so happy to be piping and pumping in all of this information for the point when we finally do get access to that. And you're right, by having an iPad, an Apple Watch, an iPhone, and you know all these devices that work together to provide that information it it's is. Amazing. You do get the full benefit yeah, out of it. So, it's really amazing, yeah. yeah. Uh, one more bit of news, and then we should move on to feedback. And that is the introduction of app clip codes. So these are special QR codes that are specific to app clips. So we talked about app clips before. These are those little mini apps of actual full featured apps. And so instead of having to download an entire app, you can just get a little bit of the app and kind of try it out for some, uh, you know, it's a demo for some apps, but for uh, an example would be when you go to park and you don't want to download the stupid parking app, you just want to use it temporarily. That's what this works for. So I'm going to show you um, Guillermo Rambo, who is a uh, developer and a writer over at 9to5Mac, uh, created an app clip. And so what you do to activate an app clip, <clears throat> excuse me, is you launch the camera app, and then you point your camera at the app clip code. It just looks like a QR code. I like the Q, but and they're circular and they're kind of cool. They looking. are. Yeah. And up here at the top, it shows the app clip code. So I can tap on that. And now I see this little um, app clip for Chibi Studio, which is Make Your Own uh, Child. Guillermo Rambo's Make Your Own Chibi. Oh, what's a Chibi? Uh, which is. It's a little avatar, it's a little oh. Japanese manga style oh. avatar. So I choose play. And then it's going to pop open this app clip that's uh, by Chibi Studio. And then look, up here at the top, I can tap on that notification to actually get the full app if I want to, but I don't. In this case, I can just start to uh, create a little character. So, oh, you can add little tattoos. And, and again, this is just the app clip. This is not the full app, but it has this much stuff built into just the little app clip. Um, so let me give it some hair here. I'll give it a mustache, of course, um, some glasses, and definitely needs to be wearing some clothes, please. Uh, and then we'll put on. This isn't some. exactly what I thought App Clip would be used for. <laughs> 
No. <laughs> Again, this is one example. Parking lots, um, <laughs> things yeah. like that. I mean, I don't. Is but it, as a demo, an app it's a demo, demo I think and that's what's good. good. Yeah, because we haven't seen a lot of use of app clips. This is often a problem. Well, no, but Apple. I mean, uh, app clips as a way for developers to give a de demo of their app, I think, is what's cool. Oh, I. See. I didn't have to pay. Oh, I didn't have to buy the app. So that's I, you know a developer. Yeah, yeah, yeah can share, can put out a tweet saying, oh, check out my new app and think about downloading it. Now you've essentially got a little trial of it and it doesn't have to stay on your phone forever. So that's one of the things is that um, app clips disappear. I think it's uh, after 24 hours. It might be perfect. I don't, yeah, it's just that, for me to try before I buy. Yeah. It's yeah, a little ephemeral deal. Um, so be on the lookout for other app clips because now developers can make, well, excuse me, app clip codes. The app clips have been around, but the actual codes that you can share around and about are available now too. So a, a pretty been, neat little feature. Been kind of uh, in the position of trying to jumpstart this technology because I, I don't know if it's too widely used at this point. And I was just going to say that's often the case with Apple. They'll in introduce something very cool, but if nobody adopts it, well, so much for that. All right, let us move on to feedback. Yes. All right. Our first bit of feedback comes from Thomas. Thomas writes in, I just bought my new iPhone, and for some reason, every time I get a notification, whatever is playing stops. I'm not sure what's going on. Do you know what might be the problem? So Thomas says that, Upon getting a notification, um, whatever he is playing will actually stop as opposed to pause and, you know, restart afterward. Uh, Thomas, there are a few things that I've thought about with this. Um, it is, it, it's, it's kind of a tough one because that shouldn't be happening, <laughs> but there are some apps that will Instead, it's a bug typically, but instead of just pausing or sort of ducking, they will actually completely stop playing whatever it is. And so I, this is going to depend on multiple factors. First, whenever you say whatever is playing stops, do you really mean that? Or are you speaking of a specific app? So are you using one app regularly? So I say an audiobook app, and that's mostly what you listen to. And when you listen to that, it ends up causing, uh, it ends up stopping after uh, a notification happens. So basically what I'm asking you, Thomas, is try this in several different apps and see if this happens, first of all, so that we can narrow it down if it's a bug specific to this app. And if it does happen in specific apps, my next question for you is this. Are you listening directly from your iPhone? Are you listening through Bluetooth headphones? Are you listening in the car? Or again, is it across multiple devices? Because that's also a factor. And then the last thing to check is that uh, you have play, and I'm, I'm trying to remember where this is, um, because there's an option for uh, for pausing. Oh, oh, it's in it's in Maps, and so again, this this is going to depend on if you're in the car, because in the Maps app there is an option uh, to whenever you're doing GPS routing, um, one is to pause uh, spoken audio versus to actually just duck the spoken audio whenever those notifications come across. So there's a lot that's unclear to me still um, that I'm going to need you to sort of troubleshoot before we can answer this question. But my guess is that you are using some Bluetooth headphones or, uh, you know, speakers or something like that. And that when this happens and the notification comes through, it's causing an issue with that Bluetooth device that then completely stops whatever is playing. So get back to me, Thomas, for a little bit more info on that before we can kind of troubleshoot farther uh, or further. But um, it could be the Bluetooth device that you're using uh, that's, that's causing that issue. Um, now this next one, Leo, I really, I think this is super cool. Uh, John writes in and says, after 10 years of the Android life, I have just made the switch to the iPhone. I got the 12 pro max and Pacific blue, just like us. <laughs> um, as a blind user, 
iOS accessibility seems superior to Android. I'd agree. I would have to yeah. argue that that's the case. Yeah. And I have a few questions if you have the time. We have the time. Uh, the Switch has been a bit overwhelming. The Shortcuts app and Siri Shortcuts seem to have huge possibilities for my disability. Do you know of a source where I can learn how to create these shortcuts and possibly a repository of sorts, both for blind accessibility and others? So let me start by answering that question before we go on to the next one. Um, to answer that question, one of the best places to go is actually my co-host uh, of Smart Tech Today uh, has a website that is all about Siri shortcuts. And in fact, it's called Shortcuts Catalog. Um, so if you go to, and we'll include a link in the show notes, of course, uh, but Matthew Casanelli is, uh, very well versed in shortcuts. In fact, before shortcuts was shortcuts, it was called workflow. And he was the person who wrote the support documents for workflow before it became shortcuts. So he was part of the original team that created shortcuts. Um, he is, he knows so much about it and will be able to help you and has a bunch of of, uh, shortcuts. And then I'm also going to ask him personally, uh, I'm going to share his, share this message with him, uh, to see if he can't put together some accessibility, uh, based shortcuts specific to that. Now, Leo, a question for you hmm. backups. How exactly do these work on iOS? For instance, if I get a new iPhone next year, will everything transfer? Will my home screen transfer? Will my settings transfer? Not just the messages and the call history, but will everything transfer yes. whenever I get a new the iPhone? things you care about will transfer. Um, what I found in this most recent upgrade, I'm sure you found the same thing. Uh, I used the, I don't know what they call it on the iPhone, the, the migration wizard. Um, and it works really kind of seamlessly. You, you When you turn on your new iPhone, uh, it says, do you want to transfer it over from your old iPhone? You have to have the old iPhone next to it or on top of it. It'll see it. You press OK. And it copies everything. The only thing I found is that it downloads new copies of the apps. That's kind of what you want it to do because the apps you have on your old iPhone uh, are for that iPhone. And Apple, they don't publicize this necessarily, but often when you download something uh, for a, a phone, it checks to see which phone you have and downloads a different version depending on which phone you have. So almost always you want to download new apps. My, It's interesting because when I did this most recently, I maybe what, I don't know, a couple hundred apps, it looked like most of the apps were already there. It either happened so fast the, in the background that I didn't notice, but I didn't notice a few apps were still coming in. So I'm guessing it downloaded all of them. It may be smart enough to say, well, I don't need to download these. It certainly doesn't have to download the uh, Apple apps because it's got those already on there. So the whole process was very quick using cloud, not even copying it to the computer. If you're going to use the uh, the computer to do the backup, if you have a Macintosh, you want to make sure you do an encrypted backup, and then it will also save all your passwords. It doesn't save passwords unless you say it's encrypted. And remember the password, because if you forget, you'll lose the, that, that backup. You won't be able to use it ever again. So if you do an encrypted backup, I th as I remember now, it even gives you that option in, I in the iCloud backup. So it, do an encrypted mm -hmm. backup so it saves all the passwords. And my experience, I'll... I'll I don't know what yours is, Micah, but my experience is it, it backs up everything you care about. I didn't have, there were a few, uh, actually, I actually shouldn't say that. There were a few apps I had to re enter passwords for, um, things like that. Apple doesn't save everything, all the settings for various apps and so forth. But the stuff you care about, it does save, I think. What exactly. do you think? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think that that's, yeah, that's perfectly put. And uh, that's one of the things that I like is that it's, it's starting to phone. Painless as can be. You, yeah, so I did on a few apps, I had to re-enter the password. Things like LastPass, I had to set up again. Things that you would expect that because yeah. you don't want to... Slack, uh, I had to re-log in, but that's yep. so good. Yep. Uh, that's a good, good thing. And Slack also has a bunch of features to make that easy to do right. uh, as well. But yeah, uh, everything. And in fact, there were some that I was a little shocked were ready to go. <laughs> I thought, um, I think I would like to log into that again. Thank you. Yeah. As opposed to it just working uh, fresh. So you might even be surprised how many are just ready to go because they essentially see themselves as being in the same instance as they were right. on your last device. Right. So yeah, it's That's pretty probably easy to do. Developer but I'm, specific, yeah. 
Yeah. And I'm, I'm really happy for you, John. Um, I do think that uh, Apple continues to demonstrate uh, a true commitment to creating accessible devices. Um, and so I hope that you know, this iPhone gives you what you need. Uh, absolutely. And yeah. like I said, I will be reaching out to Matthew about that, but uh, we'll include a link in the show notes to his uh, shortcuts guides. Uh, our last question comes from Gene. Gene writes in to say, I have an iPhone 11. Since I updated to iOS 14, I've noticed that my phone gets hot after extended listening or using a game such as Letter Fridge and listening to a podcast <laughs> or music. I, I, the play, phone, I mean, that was your app cap a few uh, it months was. ago. Yeah, Letter Fridge. <laughs> yeah. The phone gets really hot and gameplay starts to fail. I've turned off most of my background app refresh. I've upgraded all the way to 14.2.1, yet it still remains hot after all this time. And Gene points out, which Gene, it's like you're reading my mind. Gene writes, my battery health is still at 99%. So what's wrong? What's going on? This one's a tough one, Gene. And, you know, I would have been easy to answer if you hadn't told me the battery health because I would have said, well, let's take a look at that first. Uh, but you you read my mind and you knew what was going on there. Um, normally, I would say that this is a side effect of updating to the latest version of iOS. Right whenever you first make an update or when you first get a new phone, uh, that phone will be hot at first because it does a lot of background processing. Uh, typically in your photos library, it will look at your photos and start to uh, recognize faces and, and see that those are all there. It downloads and uploads and gets all of your apps ready to go and stuff like that. And that can cause hot uh, phones. But this doesn't sound like it's a phone that, you know, this isn't a new phone. This is a phone that you've had for a while and it's doing this. Um, and so what I would like, uh, you, you, you've turned off a lot of background uh, activity, but what I think you should do is in the battery app. Uh, so let me go to, where is that now? I'm, I'm having trouble finding it all. Oh, there we go. Battery. Um, instead of going all the way into battery health, look at last 10 days and look at uh, activity of the different devices and see if any of them are standout. See if any of them seem to be particularly uh, higher use than you would expect. Um, that could potentially make your battery uh, or your phone hotter because it's some app is doing a whole lot of processing and more so than it should be. And so you could have an app that has what's called a memory leak um, or a, a similar performance leak that is overdoing things. But Gene, ultimately, I am a little concerned if your battery is getting hot, if your phone is getting hot to the point that uh, game uh, or performance degradation is happening, yet the battery still reports at 99%. And so ultimately, I would suggest, and I'm curious, Leo, if you feel the same way, that uh, she strike up a convo with Apple support to make sure that there's not something bad going on. Uh, eh, I, would, I would see if it continues after uh, a few days or weeks. If it's still happening, yeah. But I think it might be, as you uh, suspected, an early uh, symptom of the upgrade and, and everything will settle down. Remember, the battery life could be deceptive. I don't know if that... It's a brand new phone. You'd expect it to have very good battery life. I don't know if that's a real indicator. The other thing to look at is which apps are using a lot of battery and see if there's one particular um, culprit. Um, but get, getting hot is normal. It's uh, working. And I think it's probably working a little bit harder than when you first do a big update. It's got a lot yeah. of behind the scenes work. So if it doesn't go away, then maybe check. But it should go away. It could be a sign of something bad if it, if it stays. I agree with you. Uh, quickly before we move on um, from the chat room, uh, another message to John. Uh, there is a website called Apple Viz, Apple as in the, the fruit, and then vis.com. Uh, and this is, it says Apple Viz is the leading online resource for blind and low vision users oh, of Apple's range of Mac nice. computers, the iPhone, iPad, etc. cetera. Uh, so this yeah, appears to be a community full of stuff to help you um, with, you know, using different apps and, and everything. Um, so yeah, we will include a link to Apple Viz as well. And thank you uh, to the user in the chat who shared at appleviz.com with us. That's pretty cool. Um, that's, it's got a lot of, 
a lot of resources. And what's great about it is it's, it's pretty plain text, so your screen reader should be able to read it pretty, pretty well. Yeah, this is a community you'll definitely want to join. That's one of the best things about uh, the Internet is these, these communities. You know, we have our own at uh, www.twit.community. They're a great place to get in information answers from, you know, your, your co-workers, cohort, colleagues, mm -hmm. uh, your group. I really like it. Getting started with your first iPhone, iPad, or iPod Touch. There's a whole section on Apple Viz dedicated just to you. So that's great. All right. Hat time. Um, I think it's time to put on the hatch. Put on, put on a happy hat. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Oh, oh, go oh. Way, huh? This hat sings. I love it. Lovely, lovely, lovely. <laughs> Why are Happy we wearing holidays. singing hats, Micah Sargent? Uh, we are wearing singing hats because it is time to honor our app picks of the week. These are the apps that we are loving, using, and want to share with all of you. You got a good and one. I do. So I, for the longest time, have been looking for a solution, a solution that works for me for collecting all sorts of junk. I am, uh, well, for one, I'm a Sagittarius. Uh, for two, I am an ever uh, aspiring polymath. And for three, I am an enthusiast. And I just really like learning stuff and knowing things and uh, reading and researching and all that stuff. And so I have endless amounts of, of links and tabs and documents and all sorts of stuff that I want to collect. And I have for the longest time just kept a text message thread with myself where oh, I share what links. A clever idea. Because I don't like Pocket. You know, I've tried Pocket. I used Pocket for a long time, but it ended up being a place where I put things that I'd forget about instead yeah. of being a place where I put things that I'd remember. And I've tried, I mean, I've tried all of the different ones that You've exist. Tried drafts, none of them ever. That's, that's the one I like. Drafts. It, drafts yeah. is just so complicated. Yeah, and I, maybe overkill. I don't have the patience yeah. to learn it. Yeah. Um, and so I was looking for something that would work. For, well, actually, I wasn't. That's the thing is that I wasn't looking for uh, a thing that would work for me, but one popped up out of the blue and I thought, I'm going to give this a go. And it's stuck around. It's available for the Mac. It's available for iPad. It's available for uh, iOS. And it is called Keep It. And Keep It Keep is it. A, an app for collecting not just links, but all sorts of stuff. So let me pull it up here uh, on my iPad so I can show it to you. It's syncing everything. Um, this app, and let me move my little face here so that it's not in the way. Um, this app is essentially a bucket into which I can throw all sorts of stuff. So for example, um, I recently purchased a little uh, pattern for knitting some um, slippers. And so this is an actual PDF that is stored in the Keep It app as opposed to being you know, a link to uh, this, because you, know, you had to buy this, this pattern. And so this is a PDF here. And you can see in the top, uh, Keep It uses a lot of Apple's modern iOS uh, functionality. So there's a little markup button. So I could take my Apple Pencil if I wanted to, choose the markup button, and then go in and mark up this PDF as I wanted to and say, oh, you know, a, I could put check marks next to the row after I've completed it, for example. Um, there's all sorts of options for, you know, storing and starring and organizing this, but then right below, uh, this PDF I've got, I, rem I was just the other day, I was remembering how, and of course there's an ad here because this is a link. 
Um, so it actually just goes to what is kind of like a mini browser built into it uh, to get to this page that I just wanted to save a link to this YouTube video because I started watching it yesterday. And then I just wanted a refresher on the structure of the cells. Um, I remember seeing those really cool animated um, cellular activity videos, kind of like a, um, a protein crawling along oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, inside yeah, yeah. of a cell and stuff yeah. like that. So I just wanted a refresher on how that all worked. And so I got really into this video, but then I had to go do something else. So I just saved it in my uh, keep it. But then... Stuff like, um, I'm trying to find one that I did recently for, oh, um, uh, Genoa cake and, or Genoese cake, as they say in England. Um, this is, instead of a link, what I've done here is I've chosen, it started out as a link, but when I shared it to keep it, a little thing popped up and it said, you know, do you want to save just the link or do you want to save it offline? And so it immediately converts it into a PDF for you that can be saved and stored offline. Um, and then I've got some different, um, you know, seed stitch uh, knit. And I mean, this is this is a perfect uh, picture of how my brain <laughs> is organized in the sense that there's just all this random stuff. I love the Wikipedia page for list, the list of common misconceptions. Um, and so I wanted to make sure that I would never forget this page. And so I actually, again, saved this as a PDF so that I can just go through and read about these and, and find some new ones whenever I want to. Like, for example, everybody thinks that the hottest part of a uh, of a pepper, like a jalapeno or something like that, they're always like, "Oh, watch out for the seeds. Yeah. The seeds they'll get you." Yeah, ya. right. Yeah, it's not the seeds. Not the seeds. It's it's the it's the white area, the pith, is it called, or pith around the seed that actually has oh, the most capsaicin. Spicy in it. pith. Yeah. Yeah, spicy pith. Exactly. Yeah, watch out for that. Yeah. And so there's just loads of oh there uh, recently the um, this is all the, your text these are all texts to yourself these were texts that I no longer oh, now I don't have to text to myself have. anymore ah. now I'm keeping them and keep it okay. now there's organization here so you can see I've got you know all of my knit and crochet stuff is this actually is really in yeah. this area I like this. I've got links here including uh, and, and then there are tags too so you can tag things so for example with fusion cast which is an app um, it's actually tagged Mac apps so I could find those as I wanted to there was a recent executive order um, that was kind of I, I was not a fan of. And so I wanted to read more about it to make sure I understood what was going on. Um, and so I've got that saved here, uh, cause I started to read it and wasn't able to finish it. And yeah, I mean, it's just a great place to store buckets of data, but it's also on top of, um, just, just being a, a, a bucket. It also has these really cool, uh, methods of, of storing content. So you can scan documents into it. You can, you know, add photos and things like that, but it also has uh, rich text support, plain text support, markdown support, and then you can store files in it too. So it's not just URLs, it's not just PDFs, but you can store other files in it as well. And so think about, you know, you are going on a trip and you want a place to kind of store, uh, the, the documents that you'd need for that trip or what have you. Um, and then with the uh, stationary, this lets you create kind of custom templates for, uh, for rich text, for, for plain text, et cetera. And so whenever you create a new item, you can set it up with this uh, stationary. And on the Mac, you can actually customize those types. So the idea there is that maybe you want to use this to keep all of your notes. If say you're, you know, you're in college and you want to have your biology notes, you could very quickly create a new piece of stationery that's called class notes and it'll already have all that information built in. So it's kind of like a template in that way. But yeah, this is just a one all this in one really nice. method for storing all yeah. of my content that I just kind of, it all just floats around up here or in other places. Now I've got it in one place. I can easily search for it. Um, oh, and it does OCR as well. Uh, so if you do scan in documents, you can get them that way. And then as we always talk about, the best thing about it is that it's available on all of my devices. Yes. So it's in the share sheet on my Mac. It's in the share sheet on my iPhone and my iPad. So no matter where I am, when I inevitably am like, oh, I got to do something else. I can't finish this right now pop it in to keep it, and it's available for me when I need it. Ten bucks a year is uh, nothing for something like this. I think that's great. Yeah, it's wow. super cool. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, keep it on all of the different app stores. I'm, I'm downloading and 
doing it right now. Very nice. Awesome. Yeah, it's, you got to find one that you really like and put everything in there. And we've been using yep. Notion for uh, some of that, but I think Notion's a little heavyweight for for something like that. So I think this is a yeah. good choice, yeah. So in past weeks, we have done um, accessories for your iPhone. Mm -hmm. um, what if your iPhone were an accessory for another device? In fact, I think we're going to have to do a show about this because there are a lot of real-world articles that use the iPhone as an accessory. I'm going to show a couple right now just to get us thinking that way. But but after I started say, thinking about that, I realized I have a lot of devices like my sleep tracker. Do you, do you you know about the sleep tracker? I know you're all into sleep. Oh, hands down, yes. Yeah. This is from uh, the sleep tracker is a Serta product that it's, you put paddles underneath your mattress, between your mattress and box spring. And so you don't have to do anything to track your sleep. Um, actually, a lot of these are in that category of health. So this is in, a, in the health category. I'll just show it real quickly because it tells you what a crappy night's sleep I got last night. <laughs> just, just what oh, I Oh, no, yeah. 59. Oh, that's pretty much, you know, that's like constant. That's always, uh, let's see, how do I go to, uh, oh, yeah, I can do the, the week. Yeah, it's not much better. You know, it's... Uh, my sleep sucks, basically. Um, you can get a sleep report and so forth. So this is a very nice way to do it. We've talked about the Aura Ring before. But uh, let me show you something that is not in health. This is kind of an interesting product as well. This is called the Remarkable. It's sleeping right now. It sleeps better than I do. So the Remarkable <laughs> is an e-ink notebook. Now, it's not cheap. It's about uh, $429 for it. And then there's another pen. You're going to want the pencil that goes with it because it has an array, the deluxe one. That's another 40 or 50 bucks. And I seem to have misplaced mine. I, I guess it's still in the oh, car. Oh, no. It's got a magnet. It sticks to the side. It's very convenient. I actually ordered, and you'll probably want to order the uh, cover as well. But here's the cool thing about this. So because it's e-ink, it's an easy way to take notes. For instance, um, and I'll actually go back to the, uh, the home screen because I have a lot of notes on here. Handwritten notes, for instance. Uh, so this, uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, we were looking at titles for Windows Weekly. I used to write this on a pad of paper as the show went, but now I do it right here on the show notes. And it's very easy. You have a choice of pens and so forth. But that's not the point. This I'm not doing an ad for the Remarkable. What's cool right. about it, what's actually remarkable about the Remarkable, <laughs> is it has a... Uh, companion app for iPhone, actually for everything, Macintosh, Windows, everything, and um, so these are the these are the notes. And I'll just show you how easy it is to uh, organize this. You can just drag these into the folders that you want. I think you can. Wait a minute, let me let me do that here. These are notebooks. This is the quick sheets. It makes it very easy. And look, it automatically when I make a change or write something, it automatically copies it over to the iPhone or the iPad. Furthermore, it's a great way, and the real, real reason I got it is as I'm doing some programming or whatever, I can annotate the book as I'm reading with the pen. I can do highlighting, or in this case, this was the, the Facebook uh, lawsuit. I can go through it, and I can highlight it, underline it uh, on Sweet. the device, and it automatically gets copied over to the iPad as a PDF, which I can then export and so forth with my, you see the highlighting. So that's a really nice adjunct. Basically, you've, you know, you might say, well, look, you can take notes on the iPad. Sure you can. But the nice thing about e-ink is you use a pen. It's kind of much more natural, your handwriting. And I love it that I can say, take a PDF document, annotate it on here, and have it automatically get copied over to my iPhone or the iPad. So that's one example. That's the remarkable. But this is the one that you were a little bit uh, worried about. Uh, this yes. is the new Oral-B Genius Toothbrush. <laughs> Oral-B Genius. I, <laughs> I like uh, electric toothbrushes. So does my dentist. Um, he says it's a good way to keep your uh, teeth clean. And, you know, most yes. electric toothbrushes... Uh, you put it in here, and every 30 seconds it, go, it, it beeps or it pauses or whatever. It tells you to do another quadrant. This one takes it to the next degree, the next <laughs> level. This is a Bluetooth-enabled toothbrush that you can actually watch. It's got an accelerometer in it 
This was uh, this morning. I got a perfect score. Shall I shall I brush my teeth? Watch what happens. Yeah, sure. Watch what happens. <laughs> and it oh, knows wow. where in my mouth I am, and what part of my mouth I'm brushing. And instead of just timing it, you can actually see when you're done with an area. It's gonna sparkle when I'm done with it. There you go. That's nice and clean. I'm this area over here. <laughs> How about that? It tells you. That's really cool. Um, it also gives you a score at the end. Uh, you can see I didn't do so well on this one because I didn't finish. Try to do better next time. Really, brush all the areas. <laughs> a little bit of a judgment. It also has additional check marks. There's a tongue cleaning routine. Did you floss? Did you rinse? All of that stuff. And then it even has some, you know, I've just ruined my score. I was really, really good. I know. It, it, reg sad. it measures coverage. You know, how much of your mouth you did. Pressure, you don't, with electric toothbrushes, one of the problems is you can press too hard. So, you, you know, it encourages you to do it right, brush the right amount of time. You can also add other routines. These are previous scores. There are challenges. You get little medals. Uh, you can go on a dental care journey. <laughs> so how to fight bad breath or how to conquer plaque or brightening up your smile or taking care of your gums the, or your braces. Captain Gumguard. <laughs> Captain Gumguard? I, I guess that's what the GU is. I <laughs> Lunchtime brusher. These are some medals you can win. Midnight brusher. Early riser. Kissable. Get it close up ready. Clean your tongue once a day for three days in a row. Power user. So this is, you know, at first it seems kind of dopey. Oh, and by the way, it, it keeps track of your uh, the age of your brush head and how much it's been used by. And it will tell nice. you when to get. You'll even get a notification, a new brush head on this thing. Okay. it's This is crazy overkill. I wish I could delete this, you know. But uh, <laughs> Yeah, can you not delete a session? Uh that would be not. Maybe I can you'll finish it. it out, Maybe cause... after the show, I'll finish it. But I think this is a really now. It's expensive. It's a couple hundred bucks. Um, it, it you know, but I it's a Bluetooth and accelerometer enabled. So I think that that's a really interesting. There, if you didn't have a smartphone, this brush couldn't do all of those things. Right. But now because we have a pretty fancy computer with the right kind of radios and receivers. Suddenly, this toothbrush is kind of even more powerful. And actually, I notice I am brushing better since I got this thing. Nice. nice Good and, for you. Nice and clean. You know, you really can tell the difference. So, if you're getting an electric toothbrush... Take a look at Oral-B uh, from Brown. Um, they're a good brand. Actually, I picked it because a Consumer Reports said it was the best. But the mm -hmm. Bluetooth thing is pretty cool. <laughs> and it makes you sneeze. Yeah. So there's... <laughs> There's, there's, I've got an older Oral-B toothbrush that yeah, is not Bluetooth good, connected, but it's just like that. Yeah, yeah. it's one of the best well, time between to get a Sonicare new one. and the... Yeah, I used Sonicare for years, but I thought, eh, I'm going to try this. And I, I'm, I believe it or not, I kind of like it. Uh, so that's the point. There's three, I think there are many, many more devices that take advantage of the smarts in your iPhone to be even smarter still. The Remarkable 2, e-ink notebook, the Oral-B Genius toothbrush, and Serta's sleep tracker. Three, count them three, app caps. Let me just push. Wow. He's really doing it all there. Push the folks. button because it's time to say Wait, a fond farewell. Mine's not working. <laughs> to all of you. We <laughs> the Burl <laughs> Ives estate's going to be all over me after this. I don't know. We, uh, we do iOS today. Okay, thank you, Burl. We do. Burl, <laughs> thank you. Come on, we, Burl. It's like there's we somebody about in my this, Burl. hat. We do iOS. Have you been drinking eggnog, Burl? Come on. <laughs> we do iOS, <laughs> iOS today, every Tuesday, 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern time, 1600 UTC. Watch or listen live at twit.tv slash live on-demand versions of the show available at the website, twit.tv slash iOS. There's an iOS Today channel on YouTube. You can subscribe there or find your favorite podcast application and subscribe. It's free and I'll guarantee you get the latest version the minute it's available. Hot off the podcast printer. 
Um, if people have questions for us, Micah, how do they get well, on there? Well, if you have questions for us, you can send those to ios today at twit.tv. <laughs> uh, you can send them in text format, <laughs> in audio format, or in video format. We do ask that you keep it under 30 seconds. No one likes a blowhard, but... If you can, we would be grateful. I don't even know if blowhard is appropriate for that. I don't even know what a blowhard is, to be honest. Anyway. <laughs> Somebody blows iOS hard. today at twit.tv. <laughs> Happy birthday, Micah. When's your birthday? The 19th of December. Okay, in four days. Uh, we will not be here next week to celebrate Micah's birthday, so I just thought I'd do it a little ahead of time. Well, thank you. We have our best of show, uh, as we do every year for all of our shows. That'll be the December 22nd episode of iOS Today. We will be back on the 29th with a look back at 2020 and a look ahead at 2021. Micah Sargent and I on iOS Today. So have a happy Hanukkah. Uh, have a wonderful Christmas. May Festivus be... Uh, a bless of us, or something, <laughs> and uh, happy birthday, uh, Mike. It's a sad thing that your birthday is so close to Christmas. I'm sure that was always a sad thing for you. But I got to give a shout out to my mom. When I was born, she said literally in the hospital, the nurse said that same thing. And she said to the nurse, no, I will never let that be the case. Yes. And she never has. She's yes. always separated my birthday, birthday from Christmas. and Christmas. You get both. <laughs> 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 Happy birthday, Micah. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Happy holidays to everybody. We really love it that you watch iOS today. Uh, we we will see you in two weeks and enjoy our best of. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. It Thank is. You. We always have fun on the show. Oh, yeah. And I get to sleep in next Tuesday. Yay. <laughs> hey, what's going on, everybody? I am Ant Pruitt, host at Twit TV. Got a question for you. Have you gotten tired of how bad your photos are looking every time you post them to Instagram? Better yet, have you gotten yourself a new camera and you can't quite figure out why the images just don't look that good? Well, I have a solution for you. This is my show, Hands On Photography. Each and every Thursday, I sit down and share different tips and tricks that are going to help make you a better photographer and a better post processor. So subscribe today at twit.tv hop to learn more.